again to be in the house of the Lord. 
Uh, if you are clergy, we will be gathering downstairs if you can make it down the stairs. Amen? For our processional end to honor this phenomenal woman of the Lord. Amen? If you still cannot make it downstairs, but so want to be in the processional. Amen? If you'll meet on the back uh, left-hand side of the church on this side to walk up with us, that is fine. If not, please take a seat over here in the section that is designated for clergy. If you are on the program as a clergy, please, or anyone else, please make sure that you're in these first rows here so we can get to the mic um, easily. Amen. So we will be gathering downstairs now if you're a clergy and you can make it down the stairs for the processional. If not, uh, meet us on this side as we come in. You may walk and we greet the family and view the body. For everyone in the sanctuary, we are under COVID protocol. Please follow the directions of our ushers it looks like we're going to be able to handle all those who are in the sanctuary now come on somebody give god a hand clap of praise for that we just ask that you keep your mask over your nose please you keep your mask over your nose unless you're singing then y'all can take it down and y'all do what y'all do amen amen when you come to the mic or phones you will see a note that says do not touch the mic they are censored you can stand way back against the wall and the mic will still pick you up. Amen. So even if you're a small one, guess what? It's going to get you. Amen? Amen. So come to the mic. If you're on the program and you're not a clergy, you'll be speaking from the stand on the floor. Clergy, please welcome to the house of the Lord and come up to the pulpit. Amen. Um, we want to have a phenomenal time in the Lord. Come on, somebody. No, that ain't good enough. Come on, somebody. Act like your team won the Super Bowl. Come on. Come on. Can you imagine how a Detroit Lions fans going to find when they feel when they finally win? Come on, somebody. Amen. That's what we That's the joy we want in this room today. Amen. Come on. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Clergy, please downstairs. Amen. Oh, I'm going up beyond. 
Give God a hand, clap of praise. Let's say goodbye. Amen. Come on. 
Come on, clap like you loved her. Clap like you knew her. Clap like she meant something to you. Come on, celebrate her life. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. I want to greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome you to the Goodwin Memorial. Baptist Church. I'm the Reverend Dr. James D. Jackson. I have the honor at this time of being the senior pastor here at Goodwin. We greet you all who are in the sanctuary and all who are following us on our many different platform for the home going service of Dr. Willa May Williams. Come on, somebody clap when you hear that name. Amen. We are going to be led through our worship experience and our celebration of life by the Bishop Curl A. Baltimore. Please greet the Spirit of God that rests in the man of God. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Come on, give him the praise. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say it one more time. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We are here to celebrate a life well lived. And we have a reason to rejoice because the Reverend Dr. Wilhelmina uh, Williams, uh, my cousin, amen, she made her decision to follow the Lord a long time ago. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. Somebody say amen. And that at the end, he will stand on earth. And after my skin worm, skin has been destroyed. Yet in my flesh, I will see God. And I myself will see him with my own eyes. She went to sleep the other day. But she's seeing him today. She's in the presence of the Lord. And I believe she's resting in a land of no more. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more disappointments. Where every day is Sunday and celebration. So we're here to celebrate. Now, my, my job is to guide us through this service. And I understand that we have to leave here 1.30. Amen. So that means we're all going to have to cooperate. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We know what that means. Amen. Now we're going to uh, start by singing uh, Blessed Assurance. Actually, we all stand except the family. Amen. We all stand except the family. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. I'm born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, 
This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, washed in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm not one to jump up and down when there is a order a printed program here. Amen. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. We all read. Amen. And so we're going to follow this. We're going to have the lesson from the Holy Writ, uh, Old Testament, uh, Reverend William Rucker. And then New Testament, Elder Dr. Linda Green, Prayer of Comfort, Reverend Donna Chambers, and then there will be a musical offering by Pastor Carolyn Splon, and then the, the pastor of this great church, the Reverend Dr. James uh, D. Jackson, will come in his own way to proclaim the word of God, and then I'll come back after that. Is that all right? I'll be reading the Old Testament, 23rd Psalm. I'll be reading out of the NLT version. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leaves me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths, yes. bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Yes. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protects and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of mine enemies. You honor me in anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever.
the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. The New Testament. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13. To the end. Oh, glory to God. And it reads out of the King James Version. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them things which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall be not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. She's my cousin now. I give you. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words thus ending the reading of the word of God It's hard. Oh, yes. It's hard. Yes. Father God. Yes, Lord. Jehovah. Yes. Holy of holy. Right. We bow before you this morning. We need you. Jesus, you said you would send your comforter. We need comfort at this hour. Lord God, we know that you are our shepherd and we shall not be in want. But Holy Spirit, which dwell inside of us, we ask, we're leaning on you today. As the family remembers her life things will be said to spark a memory we ask oh god that you give them peace jehovah shalom that's when they need you the most they need you lord when they touch one of her favorite garments her white sweater lord that's when they need you the most Hallelujah. The song has said that she will put on her robe. She already has her robe on. And we thank you for her life that was well lived down here on earth. So Father God, you decided it was time for her to take her rest. So as she's resting for us that are remaining, Lord, we ask that you be with us. You be with this family. Give them the strength that they need in the days of hell. They're going to need you, Lord. We ask that you comfort them. Wrap them up in your loving arms. 
Let them know that they are not walking alone. That you are with them. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah for her life. Hallelujah. We need to give God the highest praise. Hallelujah for her life that was well lived on earth. Thank you for her family, Lord. Continue to be with each and every one of them. Whatever they stand in need of. Jehovah Jireh, we know that you will provide every need. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. And we all say together, amen, amen, and amen. Be not dismayed, what I be God will, he will take care of you, family. Beneath his wings of love, abide. I'm a living witness today, family. God will. He will take care of, of you. I know God will take care of you through. to the song and to be tied and said no matter what happens in your life no matter what happens in our life we all got to go this way that but still god said he would take care of us i love that god will take care of you through every day We serve a good and powerful God. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Dear merciful God, we come now to say thank you, Father, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for bringing us into this place, this space, and this time to celebrate a phenomenal woman of God.
Father, we ask that you manifest your presence here. Let us feel you, Father, flowing in this area. Father, we, we thank you for just one more time to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for how our hearts are heavy. But we know we are rejoicing because she's with you. And now, Father, our prayer is always the same. May something that is said here be instilled in the hearts and minds of all those who call themselves believers that as we leave this place, we do something to up your, lift your kingdom. But, Father, if there's one, if there's one who needs, Father, to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, let them not leave out of this place without doing so. Father, if there's one that needs to come back home, they're saved, but they just need to reunite with the body of God. Father, let them use this time to reunite here. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray, and all God's people said amen, amen, and amen. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Dr. Willamay Williams was a stickler for protocol. Amen. 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 It needed to be done in the right way. Given those particular things, I would ask that the Bishop Scriven stand and be recognized. Father, Amen. Please give him a hand. Amen. The immediate past president of the IMC, Elder Kevin L. Jackson, please stand and be recognized. Amen. Amen. We also want to greet the moderator of the Central Baptist Association in the form of Reverend Richard Hampton. Amen. Come on. Amen. And there are a number amen, of dignitaries on the audience and here on the diaspora because they were her friend and family. Will all of you please stand, the clergy, the rest, please stand, and all of us greet the Spirit of God, the rest, and all of them. Amen. Come on, give them a hand. Amen. God bless you all, and thank you for the journey. It is, it is a an extreme honor for me to be here. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes. There's some preaching folk in this house right now. Amen. And for just little old me to be right here. Amen. I told Sister Pat, I was honored. Yes, yes. Amen. There are people coming as far away as Florida to be here and I didn't ex you know, just expect because I was a pastor I would be standing here. But I kid you not when I say that um, my heart is glad. And, and it's glad because we have one more time to reflect over what it means to be alive. Just one more time to be grateful that so many people didn't make it through COVID, but yet... Here we are. Somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. So, so listen to me. If, if, if you're in this space, in this place today, there is no greater way that you could honor the life and the legacy of Dr. William A. Williams is that if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it ain't hard and it is free. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. It's free. And for those of you who are online, who are also watching this, we, we extend that same invocation to you. That at the close of this message, if you just type, I need Jesus, trust me, somebody will get back to you from our church or somebody's church. <laughs> we'll reach out. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We'll find you. But we need to know. If, if you've walked away from the body for some particular reason, you got mad with God or mad with somebody in God's church and... You ain't been coming to church. Come on home. Amen. If it's the first time you've been in church for a while, just because of some reason, come on home. Let her be a reminder to you that there is a greater 
and brighter day somewhere. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on home. I want to thank Pamela for talking to me. You see, because I've only known Dr. Williams for about 20 years or so. At my time at New, at my time at St. Paul Baptist Church under the Reverend Marsha Lee Griffin, she was in very active in the Central Baptist Association. And I believe at that time she was president of the clergy ministry and running programs that as a young minister in Christ, I would sit under and see her wisdom. And, and you know, she always had a, a smile on her face and something positive to say. Yeah. But I didn't share this with you, but she popped me in the back of my head. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Did she do it with anybody else or just me? Did, did, I, mean, I mean, come on now. I just, I just need to know. Did somebody else get popped? <laughs> All right. All right. That's the true story. I must have let something come out my mouth slightly sideways and pop. And she, she told me what I did. Amen. Come on now. They say out of love, you can be corrected. But a fool listens to the merry talks of others. Amen. She, she told it like it was. And if you were in reach, it got corrected. And so when you, you share the rest of her life with me, the part I didn't know about you and your brothers growing up together and the love that was in your house and the laughter and, and to all the stories that I did not know about her taking people in and calling them family. And even after their family left, she kept on calling them family so that they became a part. And, and I, I got to thinking, what, what else didn't I know about Dr. Williams? And so, and so I went to the, to the Bible in prayer and, 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 and came to this particular scripture from the book of John, the 21st chapter and the 25th verse. Don't, don't turn to it. Listen, don't turn to it. John, the 21st chapter and the 25th verse. It says this. And there are many things Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose the world would not be big enough for all the books that would have to be written. Mm. Can we just reflect just for a moment on a theme, a life worth remembering? My, my, my brothers and my sisters, do, do, you, do you realize that our Bible isn't very big? I mean, it's not a really big book. But it contains so much that our Lord and Savior Jesus did. Amen. But, but have, you, have you ever contemplated that we don't know it all? I mean, I, I just read you a scripture that said that we don't know everything that Jesus did. A and if the writers were to take the time to sit down and try to put it all into books, he estimates, he supposes that the world wouldn't be big enough to hold them. Come on, 33 years. And he did so much for people while he walked the earth that we couldn't get it all down. I mean, come on now. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We know the stories of Jesus uplifting people. We know the stories of Jesus healing people. We know the stories of Jesus setting people free. But can you imagine? Somebody has a testimony that was walking someplace and nobody was around but them and Jesus. And Jesus touched them and they went on their way and we'll never, ever know about it. Countless stories of people for whom the master saw and maybe in a thought and a word and a deed and a glance and the 
moving of a finger and the batting of an eye, a, 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 a phrase, a blowing of breath. They were healed, touched and transformed. And we don't know anything about it. Can you imagine Jesus walking alone one night and some drunkard, some, some walker of the night, somebody who was tore up and down up on their last last just kind of rushes by Jesus. And by the time they get home, there's someone different. Oh, come on. I got nobody in this room that knows about the last last. Come on. I mean, I mean, your last last nerve. Come on, somebody. Yo, yo, broke it and broke, broke. Come on. Yo, toe down, toe down, toe down. Come on now. Jesus came out of nowhere and all of a sudden you were changed. And nobody else knows about it but you and Jesus. You don't mean to tell me that Jesus showed up one night when nobody was around and worked a miracle in your life? It ain't even written down in the book. Oh, 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 we, 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 we know about Mary, we know about Peter, we know about Paul, we know about Lazarus, we know about the blind man, we know about the woman with the issue of blood, we know about the deaf man, we know about the man with the demonic spirit, we know about the man with the shrivel of hands, but somebody should give God a hand clap of praise that Jesus did something for somebody we don't even know about it. Well, why is that important? It's because if you're trying to emulate Jesus... The people you help, that you brag about, but the people you help just out the goodness of your heart are just as important. You see, the big things are important, amen? But it's the little things that change people's lives. Come on. Can you imagine living a life where people know that you're going to do big things? But while people are watching you from the front end, you blessing somebody on the back end. While, 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 while you're the face of the public, the public doesn't know that some family is being healed, some young woman is being transformed, some young man is being corrected. You see, inside of our lives, we are so busy big, being concerned about the big programs, but it's the little meaningful things that change people's lives. Oh, you don't believe me? The Bible says he never said a mumbling word. That's a little thing. It says that they spat in his face. He didn't give them a cross look. That's a little thing. They, they, they say as they called him everything but a child of God. He did a little thing by saying, Father, forgive them. Come on, somebody. How about you? If, if the writer were to sit and start writing out your life, how big would your book be? Uh, it says right now that Jesus' story, you, you couldn't fill it all. But how big would your book be? I, I, I know right now if they sat down and started writing my life out, the comedy would be a series. <laughs> Amen? The tragedy would be a series. But thanks be to God that there are people who walked this earth, who understood that Jesus did it on the front end and the back end. Do you know anyone who would say, let the church say amen while she was trying to bless everyone in sight and then going home and giving money out of her pocket to those who need it? I, I need someone to reflect on their memory. Can you think of someone who worked tirelessly in their association but on the way home, blessed her family with love and laughter. I, I, I need for somebody to think right now exactly how many big things can you think that Dr. Willa Mae Williams did, but think personally on the little things she did to touch your very life. If, if you had to sit down and write her story out, 
I, I truly believe that a life worth remembering would go something like this for Dr. Williams. Remember me not for who I was, but remember me for Jesus who was in me. I, I want you to remember me not for the things I have done, but for those things that Jesus did through me. I, I want you to remember me not for for the people I, I love, but remember the one who died because he loved me first. I, I want you to remember me not as one who, who gave, but one who received much from the blood of Christ. I, I want you to remember me not as one who spoke of God, but one who knew that when God speaks, all things can be changed. I want you to remember me not for one who prayed, but remember that I was one who believed in prayer. Remember me not for me being a strong person, but remember the one who, when you ain't got no strength, you can call out to. I need you to remember me not for the one who died this day, but remember the one that I'm going to meet who died for me. I, I need you to remember me not for my life and my death, but it prophets you not, but remember me because I love me some Jesus. I stuck me some Jesus. I preached me some Jesus. I ran with me some Jesus. Can the church say amen? A life worth remembering is a life that has both a personal and a private giving. I need for you to understand that when Jesus was carrying that cross up to Calvary's mountain, he did it publicly so that privately you could ask him to carry your burdens. I need for you to understand that when Jesus publicly took those nails in his hands, he did it so privately he could remove the nails out of your hands. I need for you to remember when Jesus was publicly put inside a tomb, he did so so privately you can walk out of anything that is keeping you in darkness. I need for you to remember when he publicly got up and walked through the city and said, peace be with you. Finally, he will say that peace is always with you. Somebody, anybody, if you got something that you can be glad, that you can thank Jesus about, give God a hand, couple of praise up in here. If you're thankful that you knew Dr. Williams and the life she lived, give her a clap up in here. A life worth remembering is a life that is a blessing to all. God bless you. Wow, somebody needs to say something here. Lord, this preacher preached, didn't he? Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Doc. Life worth living. I think that's reusable. <laughs> I think I think preachers know what I'm talking about. You know. You you carried me back though when you said that hit on the back of your head. That's old school stuff. And uh, I remember. Uh, I've had a few hits on the back of my head growing up in the church. Now they don't do that anymore. Amen. They let kids do whatever they want to do. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, Lord, help. But praise the Lord. Thank you for that word. And it's well done. Thank you, preacher. Uh, now we're going to have a musical selection from Minister Thaddeus and Karen Gatlin, and then acknowledgments, condolences, and obituary from Sister Joanna uh, Hicks. Amen. In that order. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is a good God. We thank God for that word about Reverend Williams. We called her Mama Williams. And I just thank God because she did. She embraced you. And I just thank God for her. I thank God for her life. 
I thank God we didn't know her growing up, but I thank God for the time that we knew her. The time that we knew her, it was almost like we knew her. In growing up, she embraced us with love, but she definitely was a woman that called it like it is, and she would get with you. And I thank God, and I was as I was talking to Pam, and we're praying for you, family, and as I was talking to Pam, and she said, uh, can you do a medley of song? Because we know uh, Mama Williams was Baptist to the bone. And, and we just want to come with just a medley of, you know, just some Baptists, you know, some just to, just to, just to say how, how we know that she would, she would do it. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. How about you? Did you have any doubt when you rose this morning? Hallelujah. This morning when I roll, yeah, I didn't have no time. Yeah, this morning when I roll, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Yeah, yeah, this morning when I roll, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Cause I know the Lord will take care of me. I know will my battle for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
going to wait. If you're striving, if you're yet striving, God is for the riding for the ride. We shall wear a gold, he shall wear a gold. Yeah, Soon as my feet start sighing, soon as my feet start sighing, I'm going to lay down my head. Yeah. Burn she gonna oil, put, put on, on my robe and ah! glory. I'm we gonna, gonna shout, tell the story. Soon as I can see Jesus, I'm gonna tell him all about my trouble. I'm gonna put on my robe and glory. I'm gonna shout, tell the story. We shall wear, we shall wear our gold and cry. We shall wear. Shall wear a crown with a trumpet sound in the trumpet sound. We shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown with the trumpet sound in the trumpet sound. We shall wear. We shall wear a gold crown. What she there for? What she yet there for? That's what she did. No, not the day. When the Lord took her soul away, she lived the life. She lived the life. Your soul away. Hey, if you're striving, fighting for, fighting for your life, we shall wear. We shall wear a gold Hallelujah! Crown, crown. God bless you. We love your mother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. We shall wear a crown. Yeah, we shall wear a crown when the trumpet sound. When the trumpet sound, yeah. oh, oh. we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. my auntie is rejoicing she is rejoicing thank you for those beautiful selections oh i can just see her now she's rejoicing amen i have some that i'm going to read there are so many nice resolutions and all but we don't have the time, but the family wants you to know we just thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. The first resolution I'm going to read is from Goodwin Memorial Baptist Church to the family of Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Psalm 23, 4. The officers and members of Goodwin Memorial Baptist Church and the clergy ministry wish to express to you our sincere sympathy and love in the passing of your loved one and our sister in Christ, Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams. May the healing gifts of time and the timeless love of God carry you gently through the loss you're feeling now. God is good. He will sustain you. God is faithful. He will not forsake you. God is loving. He will comfort you. God is near and he will never leave you. God's garden. God looked around his garden and he found an empty place. He then looked down upon this earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you are suffering. He knew you were in pain. He knew you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. To the entire family, the Lord knows all that you are going through. He loves you, he cares for you, and he will make sure not one detail is overlooked in your life. We want you to know that our prayers and thoughts are with you. If we can be of any service to you, please feel free to call on us. With our love and deepest sympathy, Reverend Dr. James D. Jackson, Senior Pastor. From the Pennsylvania Baptist Clergy Women's Association, the founder was Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Williams, and we all know Warren, and we all know her. Resolution for Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46.1. Whereas we the officers and members of the Pennsylvania Baptist clergywomen wish to express our deepest sympathy and sincere condolences to the family of our beloved sister in Christ and former vice president at large, Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams. Whereas Dr. Williams was an integral part of the founders of the Central and Eastern region, which became the Pennsylvania Baptist Clergy Women Incorporated under the leadership of our founder, Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Warren. She served as vice president at large she would host the annual conference in Harrisburg every other year. Whereas as you go through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil for God promises to be with you. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his servants. Be it resolved, we bow in humble submission to God who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by the promise of God to never leave you or forsake you. But it is further resolved, loss is deep and sorrow is great, but we recognize the power of God in your life to comfort you and give you peace that suppresses understanding. You are in our prayers. Humbly submitted on this, the 15th day of November, in the year of our Lord, 2021, Reverend Patricia Rome, President, Reverend Barbara Finley, Vice President. Condolence letter to the family of Dr. Willa Mae Williams. The lights of Pensacola, Florida became a little dimmer on November 9th, 2021 with the passing of my dear and beloved friend and colleague, Dr. Willa Mae Williams. I truly rejoice in the life, ministry, friendship, and the legacy of Dr. Williams 
having known her for the past 45 years as we worked together for the Central Baptist Association in Pennsylvania. Without a doubt, she was a servant of the Lord and will be solely missed by her family, friends, and colleagues. She was a strong, godly preacher, amen to that, and was a blessing to have and a loving and caring Christian who loved the Lord with all her heart. As we grieve the loss of one of God's great servants, her wisdom, friendly demeanor, scholarship, leadership, and mentorship has blessed the body of Christ. Her voice of reason passing, it is imprinted upon all who knew her. Pamela, may Philippians 4, 7 encourage you and the family. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. In God's infinite love and wisdom, the Lord has been fit to call from labor to reward, Dr. Williams. Her legacy of love will remain as a rich deposit in each of your hearts and undoubtedly pay rich dividends in the days, months, and years to come as you recall all she has meant to each of you. Remember, she is living in the hearts of those who she touched for nothing loved is ever lost. And we know that she was loved so much by her family and friends. I pray that your tears of sorrow will turn into tears of joy in God's own time. In closing, I have been truly best beyond measure having Dr. Willa Mae Williams as a true and wonderful friend. Rest, Dr. Williams. You were a servant leader. Prayerfully submitted, Florence Jean Wright. Greater Little Rock Baptist Church. To our beloved members, Pamela and John J.B. Bennett and family, the passing of your loved one, Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams deeply saddens us. Because of God's love for you and your family, we know that so many precious memories of your loved one are close to your hearts and we will never be forgotten. So now sit with you in your moment of sorrow, not to give advice, but to let you know that we do care. Because we are family here at Greater Little Rock Baptist Church, we share your pain and we are encouraged because you are being encouraged by the power of Jesus Christ. Resolution, whereas it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to remove from this life and place in his bosom of rest, one beloved to you and many. But it is resolved that we will always join you and your family in honoring her memories until we all unite with Jesus Christ. May your future family gatherings be filled with moments in which she will share and cherish the years, months, and days that you spent with her. We will be praying for you and your family members to accept God's will, to love each other, and to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Finally, we will earnestly pray that God will continue to lead you by his word and comfort you by the Holy Spirit. Prayerfully submitted, Dr. Lonnie D. Wesley, the third pastor, and the Greater Little Rock Baptist Church family. Church resolution of condolences to the family of Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams. We, the officers and members of Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church, want the family to know that our hearts are heavy with you as you gather to bid a Christian goodbye to a great woman of God. Whereas a bright and shiny star was dimmed by the passing of Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams, who was taken from an earthly life by a merciful angel and who now resides in a heavenly place. And whereas the passing of your beloved Reverend Dr. Williams is the will of God, 
and there is human tie that has been broken, which grieves the heart in sadness and sorrow. We are encouraged and consoled by the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And whereas it is difficult to lose someone so special, and though words cannot take away the sadness, we know that your loved one is in God's care and has made her journey to the sky. And whereas Reverend Dr. Williams amplified true Christianity through her many unselfish acts of love and kindness. She was a loving and uplifting spirit to her church, family, friends, along with everyone who was blessed to know her. Through her life and living, Reverend Dr. Williams proved to be a faithful servant of the Lord and be it resolved that we offer sincere prayers and support for her beloved family and friends and remind them that although our earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, but an eternal in the heavens for those who love and serve him. We mourn Reverend Dr. Williams passing because we love her, yet we have a blessed assurance that she is a breast with her heavenly father. Finally, but it resolved that this resolution comm com commemorating the life, legacy, and service of Reverend Dr. Will May Williams is filled in the records of the Solid Rock Missionary Baptist Church of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and a copy given to the family, humbly submitted on this 19th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2021, Reverend Thomas A. Keyes, pastor, teacher. Amen. And just to just go through, but not read, um, we have resolution from Reverend Richard Hampton. Resolution from Reverend James Hampton. We have a resolution from moderator from Central Baptist, Reverend Turner. Resolution from Pastor Ethel Boyd Williams. Resolution from Bishop David Scriven, Pastor. Resolution from Marion Elby. Reverend Joyce Pratter. Joseph Green. And there are more, but as I said, time does not allow to just keep us in prayer. And we thank you all so much. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. A life well lived, there's so much that you try to cram into a very short time. Family will read these at their leisure. Uh, they're giving me a signal they need to move. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, we now come to a moment, say, the family reflections, and you have one of these like I have. And it says two minute limit, comma, please. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> it says two minutes limit, please. Now that's put down here by the family. Somebody say amen. amen. Ronnie Norris, Anthony Norris, Kiana Briscoe, Thomas Brown, and then close out by Pamela and John Bennett Sr. Amen, everybody. So give me two minutes. Two minutes wouldn't be possibly enough time for me to explain how much this uh, giant of a woman has meant to me in my life. You understand? So during our quest here on earth, you know, we would think that, you know, we would want to set our footprints 
on individuals, especially ones that we hold near and dear. So as for me, my Aunt Billy, because that's what her nephews call her. We call her, you know, Aunt Billy. And she calls me, uh, matter of fact, she's the only my only aunt that calls me Little Ronnie. You know, 50 years old, she still calls me Little Ronnie. In fact, the one time my kids, uh, we seen her at Burlington one day, and uh, she didn't ask my kids, where's your dad? You know, she would say, where's Little Ronnie? Of course, you know, we would greet, and she'd give me the old head treatment. She'd grab me by my cheeks, you know, rub me on my head. You know, Little Ronnie, you know. And then Billy, you know, 50-something years old now. You still call me Little Ronnie. <laughs> but that was her. You know, she was special. You know, I always had a great deal of uh, reverence for my aunt because all my life I've just known her to be this woman of God, you know. And as you get older, you realize, I mean, you, you just appreciate, you marvel at somebody like that. You know, as, uh, like I said, ever since I was from day one, I've just known her to be a woman of God. Um, she's been a spiritual vessel to me. Um, my mother, uh, who was also a spiritual vessel in my life, uh, you know, I kind of seen the maturation take place with my mother. You know, I've seen her becoming, you know, so I, you know, like I said, it's, I marvel at that. You know, I used to light up like a Christmas tree when I seen her, but she always had a gem to drop on me. You know, as we always say, she kept it 100, you know, so in closing, I'm just going to say uh, I attended a funeral last week, um, someone that was near to me and um, my cousin's girlfriend. She was like a sister to me. But the pastor there's eulogy was she's ran the race. The race has been ran or is it the race has been run? Cousin Pam, you with the McDevitt. Which one is it? All right. <laughs> Hey, Kiana, I got to check in with her. She went to McDevitt, you know what I mean? But she's surrounded by some cougars and, and pioneers and tigers today. So anyway, uh, you know, his message was that the, uh, the race has been ran and she's passed the baton on to us. You know, so the race must continue. And I just want to say that uh, during her race, she set her footprints on me, you know, that's for sure. So I just want to say to my Aunt Billy that, uh, that I love you more today than I did yesterday. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, my grandmother was a woman of faith. She was a woman of love. She loved everybody. Um, my pastor in Reno, um, the church model was love God, serve people, present Jesus. And my, my grandmother, she lived that model, um, in everything that she did. I remember I spent every summer up here with her. Um, we would do all night prayer. We would do, um, we would, we would have, uh, the Pennsylvania state Baptist convention, the Congress of Christian education in Shippensburg. Granny had us in church. Granny would make us sing. She would make us worship. She would make us, she taught us how to pray, but she did everything that she did in love. She loved people. I remember when we would leave church on Market Street and there was a KFC up the street and she would go up there. She would give food to people that were homeless and give it to them. She would, she was just a person that just loved people. She served people. And a lot of what she's taught me will help me to be, it's, it's in me. And I, I wouldn't be who I am without her. Um, uh, one of the, um, the fond memories of my grandmother, she would stay up all night long. We would go to the post office, to 7-Eleven. We would just drive around Harrisburg at all hours of the night. And no matter where I went in, in the world, I knew I could call her and she would always be up. She was an encourager. She would encourage me when I was going through uh, school. She would say, you got it, baby. The apple don't fall far from the tree. And I just love her. I love her. I love her. And I thank God for her. And please keep our, our family in your prayers. I'm the oldest son. On the day that you're born, we board the train of life. 
And then as we get on that train, we meet our parents. And we think that they'll be with us forever. But as we pull into the station, as we go along our train of life, people board and people get off. Last Tuesday morning, Reverend Dr. Willa Mae Williams, Aunt Billy, Granny, Grandma, Mother-in-law, she got off of our train. Family, we are here to continue on that train of life. Some people will get on your train who are insignificant to us. They'll get off our train and we'll never know that they got off. But we'll always remember the day that mom stepped off of our train. For those of you that don't know us, mother left in all of us a strength. People look at me sometimes, I coach football. They ask me, coach, why are you so tough? I said, you got to know the lady that brought me into this world. <laughs> she made me tough. Mother made me tough. My sons are tough. My grandsons are tough. My sister, she's amazing. She's really tough. Okay. And so on this day, I'd like to thank the Goodwin Memorial Baptist Church. First of all, we were brought up in this church. I was, I've been here since I was a little boy. I'm 70 today. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. And as we leave here, remember that lady who's gone on to rest, she loved us all, but she left a legacy. And there sits her legacy right there. I'm now the oldest one and I'll continue that legacy until the, I get off my train. Thank you. Well, I'm Rudy, Rudy the, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that's what my mom used to call me. She called me that because she knew that uh, the Christmas special that comes on every year that, that I enjoy that. And I think Pam, she bought a little doll for me of Rudy and it sings and, you know, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the nose be. Uh, shining along. But I like to say the Lord uh, provided a mother, which is my mom was Retha uh, Kennedy, uh, Dee Dee Bennett, we call it. She was a choir member. And Willa Mae Billy Williams, a pastor, which is my mom. And I thought about this. I said, it's no wonder how my prayer life or our prayer life um, in serving and comforting by the Holy Spirit. You know, I thank you, Father, uh, for, for both of them. Five years ago, uh, April, somewhere around 2016, I asked the question why my son lied asleep. I uh, hear where our mom is now. I said, what are the seven things a son needs from his father? I noted one of the seven, that he needs his father to love his mother, and that I truly do. And if I may add, I love his grandmother too. And I pray that my entire family believe that this is true and that God knows and he loves us all first. There's another question today is, what can you say about a man who on Mother's Day sends flowers to his mother-in-law with a note thanking her for making him the happiest man on earth. It's, it's not mine. It's not my wish. Boy, I wish it was mine. It's, it's actually Nancy Reagan's. But if I may answer Nancy, I would say it's a man who loves his wife and mother, who he called mom. My last conversation with mom was about 2 p.m. on Monday. Uh, the 8th, uh, before surgery, I said, Mom, I'm here to pray. I always pray with the 
for you before you go into surgery. And she said, hi, Rudy. She says, I'm good, thanks to the Lord. She said, but please pray for Pam and pray for yourself too. <laughs> because you're going to need it. <laughs> she said, we joked and laughed and we always began prayer with a scripture. And y'all know I love, I love the Bible. I love to read the Bible with understanding. And we, we read Romans 5, 1 through 5, the Holy Spirit provided. The Apostle Paul's epistle and his letter to Rome it says, peace and hope. He said, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, you know, mom, mom going to chime in on this. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hopes of glory. Mom, I, I saw the smile on mom. And we boast in the hopes of glory in God, not only so, but we also glorify in our suffering. Mom said, yellow. She said, yeah, Lord. She said, because we know that suffering produces, and mom, simultaneously, we're, we're saying this thing, scripture together. She says, produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God loves has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given us, given this to us. And then we go into prayer. Let us pray. Mom, we pray together. Let us pray. Therefore, Lord, we thank you and praise you, Father, in Jesus' name, for what thou will do and already done for our mom and with your healing power, we believe it will be done and pray that this moment glorified you and persevere us in our faith in you and touch, here it is right here, and touch the heart of someone nearby. And then it says, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. So mom says, we, mom said, amen, amen. I said, mom, I'll see you, and I will be here after the surgery. I kissed her on the forehead, as I always do. But I couldn't find my way out the door, out of the pre-op room, and mom helped me out. <laughs> when she saw me struggling, <laughs> she told me to open the door, Rudy, the dude, just push the button, Rudy. And I'm still struggling. She said, look at the exit, Rudy. Push the button. And, I, and the door opened, and the nurse looked at mom and said, you're hired. <laughs> and I think back now that my mom was really uh, ready to go to heaven. And I was delaying the process. <laughs> I really thought. The uh, surgery was long. It was 16 hours long. And the ICU had called us and welcomed us back at that time. And, and as Pam reached over to mom, on her, just her right eye, Pam was talking to her and her right eye just wept. Just the right eye just wept. And about 7.45 on Tuesday, I said my last word to mom. I said, mom, I said, this is Rudy. I love you. You are a good and loving mom. A loving wife. You love your children, your grandchildren. You were a good servant to God. You served him well. You loved him in his church. You gave to those in need. Mom, thank you for giving me your daughter, Pam, and being my mom. Don't worry, I'll take care of her. And we'll be all right. And I kissed her on the forehead as I always do. And mom passed and fell asleep at 9 a.m. As Pam and I were exiting, this is, this is the part, uh, uh, Reverend Jackson, of someone that mom always touched nearby, mm -hmm. as Jesus does. As we exit the ICU, I took a picture of, on the wall of the ICU is Psalms 67.2. Uh, it says, oh God, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. That's the scripture that the ICU of sacred heart that they use. While, while waiting for the elevator, a nurse a technician ran to the elevator. His name was James. Oh, the name James, my best man's name was James. He ran to us as the elevator came and he greeted us with sorrow and sadness and he hugged Pam. He hugged Pam. I reached out my hand to shake his hand and he pushed my hand away and he hugged me and he said, 
I'm sorry for your loss. We love you both. And that's when I knew that God touched a heart nearby and that he saved for a testimony, a sign that God was pleased with Pam, a sign that he was pleased with Pam and her care for her mom, a promise that she gave to her father that she would take care of her mom, which, each, which she truly did. And I'm a witness of that. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. So there's been so much said here today, but I can say that mom was the matriarch of this family. And as my daughter Kiana said, she taught us to live. She taught us to love. She taught us to treat everybody right and to treat everyone with kindness. That's who we are today. And we praise and thank God for her. We praise and thank God for her legacy, the life that she lived. And she loved, loved, loved God. She also, she loved, loved, loved serving her family. She loved people. But I'm going to make you laugh on this. So we're talking about she loved God. She loved serving the Lord. She loved her family. She loved people. But she also loved a nice cold Pepsi. Yeah. And so I would be very <laughs> remiss today if I didn't say that because yeah, one of the things mom loved was, was just the, fa the fa seriously, the family time um, that she had with us. But I want to share this with you really quick. You know, when I took her to the hospital last Monday morning, we got, I got her out of the car. She had a white sweater and um, she wore it all the time. She wore it to, to breakfast. She wore it to lunch, whatever. She wore that white sweater. We could buy her a gray, pink, blue, black, mm. whatever color sweater we would buy her. She would always wash and clean that white sweater and wear it. But when she got out of that car um, last Monday morning, she took the sweater off. And she kind of flung that sweater, kind of like flung it in the back of the car as if to say, I won't be needing this sweater anymore because I'm getting ready to put on my white robe. I truly believe somehow that she knew. Um, but I just praise God for her life. I praise God for the legacy that she's leaving behind. And I love, love, love my mother. Loved her. And I just thank God that he allowed me to be able to spend the years that I spent with her just loving on her, but most importantly, the last four years when I moved her to Pensacola, moved her out of Harrisburg, moved her to Pensacola, I just, I'm just so thankful for that time. And I thank all of you for coming out today and loving on us um, and, and being obedient and understanding that due to COVID, we, we could not um, have everyone here that wanted to be here but I'm just thankful for all of you that come out to support us. And we're going to, family, we're going to continue the legacy. We're going to keep it going because y'all got to remember, I am my mother's daughter. <laughs> yes, you are. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, we in harmony and what we're going to make a switch here real quick. But let me say that uh, Pam uh, Carolyn Wigginson, that you know at uh, Mount Olive Church in Centerville, uh, Virginia sent her prayers and support for you and the family. God bless you. Uh, we're going to move uh, this election to the end uh, because some have to leave. We're going to move now. Oh, by the way, uh, I did not overlook the obituary. I'm trying to make up some time, redeem the time. One of the first things we do when we get this, these programs, we, we read the obituary. Isn't that right? So we've already read it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and, and we're going to take it home <clears throat> and we're going to read it again. And we'll discuss it among ourselves. Somebody say amen. And then when someone else pass, or we pass in our homes, we'll pull it out. 
didn't change a name. They didn't put, put our name in it. Somebody say amen. Because this is pretty good. <laughs> I'm trying to make y'all feel a little better about it. <laughs> and yeah, amen. Praise the Lord. Some folk, you have to work hard. Amen. When the past to fix it up, make them sound good, but not this one. This is a life way of living. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So yesterday, I had a funeral of a man 101 years old. And then to see this uh, this cousin here, 87, is a blessing from the Lord. All right, preachers. Uh, clergy reflections, two minutes, please. We have to get out of here in a few minutes. Somebody said, yes, yes. Uh, uh, I was at a funeral recently and I had to preside and it was tough. I said two minutes and one preacher got up past and it took 20 whole minutes. And I had to almost say, well, we're not there to look for preaching engagements. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I'm being nice today. I have to go back to Virginia. Praise the Lord. But uh, two minutes. Uh, we thank the clergy for coming today. Uh, um, <clears throat> to support this family. The Reverend Jean McCants, uh, Bishop David uh, Chevron, Chevron, I'm saying it right? Shriven, amen. Bishop Wilbur L. Baltimore, a senior statesman, amen, out of the Baltimore clan. Elder Kevin L. Jackson, and the Reverend Dr. Aaron Wilford Jr. in that order. Let every heart say praise the Lord. Praise Truly, we thank God for being here today, protocol having already been established. We want to say that we thank and we praise God for being able to just have a chance to ha make a reflection concerning the Reverend Dr. Willamie Williams. Amen. I can certainly attest to the fact that she proved to be an anointed yeah. and appointed yeah. woman of God. She loved the Lord, she loved the family, she loved her pastor, and she loved her church family. She's one who didn't go around with a sign saying, I'm a Christian. Didn't go around with a sign saying, I'm Dr. Willoughby Williams, help me somebody. But she lived her life in a way that people knew that she was a child of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm grateful today for the fact that God in his ultimate wisdom, saw the need for a servant in the form of Reverend Dr. Willoughby Williams to come to a little town called Cantonment, Florida. And when she got there, God further saw fit for her to become a part of Providence Baptist Church under watch care. And whether you realize it or not, God blesses us and allows us to be, have folks in our lives for a season. And we at Providence Baptist Church want to say that we truly thank God as well as Sister Pam and, and Brother JB for her being a part of the Providence Baptist Church family. She worked as an associate minister and president of our women's mission auxiliary, and she allowed God to use her and was able to make a significant difference in the lives of people in the congregation as well as people in the community. We found her to be one who didn't mind telling things like the I.S. is. Can I get a witness? Amen. And we want to say that we just thank God for uh, each and every one of you. We thank God for the fact that Sister Pam and, and Brother J.B. did an excellent job in providing the best of care for Dr. Williams. Amen. And we want you to know that you can look to the hills, know that your help coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth. You know that God is a refuge and our refuge and strength, very present help in the time of trouble. We all love Dr. Williams, but God loved her best. May God forever bless you and keep you as our prayer. Can I get an amen?
question, please. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Yes. As a matter of fact, that word distributed idea. Just put it together, but that word uh, kind of summarized what uh, I want to say. Uh, there are some things that are not written even in the lives of individuals. And sometimes everybody may not know. But one thing she was, that I thought about was a trailblazer. I served the I am as president of the IMC, but even before then, uh, I noticed and I thought about it that Reverend Warren was the first female member of the IMC Interdenominational Minister Conference because during the time when I came in, there were no women. Uh, and that was not because there weren't any women pastoring and preaching. It's just that they didn't invite any women. I'm sure you women know what I'm talking about. And by the, let's say the self-confidence that these two women had, they decided they're going to be a part. The Lord had called them to preach, to pastor, and it, and it was four pastors. And they decided they were gonna walk in to our meetings and said, we are here. And they were there ever since they trailblazed the way for women to be a part. As a result, two other women came in. One was uh, uh, Pastor Clarice Chambers, who then became the second vice president of the IMC. Yes. And then after her, it became Sister uh, Alton, Reverend Alton. And she became the first female president of the IMC. So therefore, those two women, including Reverend Dr. Williams, trailblazed. They were fearless. They were confident. They knew that the, what the Lord was calling them to do. And as a result of that, uh, they trailblazed the way. And so now it has been opened up. They opened the way up for that conference. But the last thing that, and you all struck this in my mind, the last thing I can remember before she made a move to Florida, I think I was the last person that she did some official work with. She became the treasurer of the IMC. And she was meticulous about bookkeeping and money. <laughs> and, uh, and, we, uh, and as it was, we had gotten to the place we had to make reports to the IRS on a regular basis about the funds that we received and the funds that how we dispersed it, our expense and our income. And even in physical challenges, physical challenge, matter of fact, she came to my office with just walking with crutches. I said, uh, Reverend Williams, why, what you doing here? says, I want to make sure these books are up to date. Yes, yes. But when I leave here, okay, they don't have to worry about it anymore. And that is what she did. She made sure that the record keeping, the, the finances, the monies were there so that we could regularly report our results to the IRS. That's unwritten. And she did a tremendous job. And uh, I love that young woman because I saw the dedication in her 
the perseverance and the under, I'm, I'm talking about under severe pain, walking on crutches and, and, and sometimes in clement weather, she made her way. I said, well, mother, let us meet. No, I'm coming here to your office. And so she would come and, and set the record straight and keep those things up to, I think that deserves a wonderful applause for this woman of God. And my last word there is, I'm told that there was a, a child, uh, their parents had moved to a new location. And so they decided during the holiday to go for a picnic. And as she was with them and sharing in this picnic, she began to watch the birds. And she followed the birds to the point and no one was noticing. And she was following the birds to the point that she lost herself in the park and couldn't find her way home. And so naturally at that time, the parents were concerned. They sent the authorities out and they found her, but she was so far on the other side of town. And she, they said, well, where do you live? She said, you know, I don't know the address of that place. We just moved here and I didn't get a chance to memorize the address. She said, well, what do you notice? You know, some familiar areas. She said, well, I tell you what, I do remember one thing where our house was. Say, right down the street, there's a church. And on the top of the church, there's a cross. She said, if you lead me to that cross, I'll be able to make it home. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you love Jesus, give him a hand clap, will you? I am so glad, so glad to have known such a woman. The songwriter said, may the works I done speak for me. Uh, as I look back over the time that I knew your mom and we had time to talk, she was quite a lady, very articulate. She knew what she was saying. She knew what she was doing and she did it very well. I was impressed. So I say to my I say to my cousin, who is this lady? And today I found out how she was kin to us. Today. today. And today. James Baltimore was a Baltimore and Reverend Carol Baltimore and I are Baltimore's, you know? <laughs> so I say, she really is kin to us. <clears throat> and I got all excited over there because I found someone who was so enthused about what she was doing. When's the last time you were enthused about what you were doing? When is the last, <laughs> glory to God. When's the last time you said yes to the Lord? And 
there's something unique about serving God when you really have it in your heart. It makes you feel like you want to run and jump and scream and holler. To the age now, I can't run like I want to. I can only run in place about 30 seconds. When you get 82 years old, it's not fun to be old, but it's a blessing. <laughs> it's a blessing. So Pam, to you and to your family, and thank you so much for the, uh, just recognizing that you wanted me to say a few words. I, I, I really appreciate that. And I thank God for all of the people of God who come. The scripture teaches me this, blessed are the dead, who die in the Lord. Let me say it again. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord for they rest from their labors and their works. Do follow them. I see the works of Cousin Billy sitting over here and sitting back there the works that follow her are still in place and the one thing I like about it and I'm going to my seat my two minutes are over one thing I like about it God has a way of rewarding us for our stewardship. We were not born to be served, but we were born to serve. Hallelujah. And when the day is over, I too want to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful. What? Servant. You've been faithful over a few things, and come on in, I'll make you ruler. Oh, oh, you know what? I don't know if I want to rule anybody because folk can be bad when. <laughs> but he said he would make us ruler over many because of our faithfulness to his cause. God bless you today. I pray that God will continue to give you the strength that you need in a time like today. I don't know if this is my program. Did I, did I bring it? You know, I'm forgetful sometimes. No, I'm just messing with you. God bless all of you. Look at your friend and tell your, and, and tell your neighbor, I'm glad I know that I'm still alive. But one will be the day. Tell him one will be the day when I'll escape this prison I'm in. And I'm going home to be with my Lord forever. God bless you. To the family of Dr. Williams, to Sister Pamela and her husband, thank you for the privilege to be able to say a word regarding your mother. Dr. Jackson, I have to make one correction, sir. Bless you, sir. When you introduced me, you introduced me as the past president of IMC. Yes, sir. That is not the case. Oh. Yeah. But, but I, I counted still worthy as being a servant uh, for as a secretary for IMC over 10 years myself. And part of that time, I was able to work with Dr. Williams as a treasurer. The amazing thing about her is that we would meet privately at her apartment at Union Deposit 
in Progress Avenue. Yeah, and I would always knock on her door. Sometimes if she wasn't able to come to the door, I would slip the envelope of a check or some kind of donation to IMC. But when she did open the door to let me come in and receive that, she always had a story to tell me. She took the time to share her life. And I remember this about her. I remember a phrase she used, and I've heard it a couple of times already today. She would say, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> and now I can imagine she's in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the glory of Christ is before her. I know she's agreeing with all of the hosts of heaven. Say, yes, yes, he's Lord. God bless you and thank you for this time. One other thing, I have to say that we do have a newly elect president, Dr. David Miller, and uh, we ask you to continue to lift up the organization under his leadership. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. We bless the spirit of the living God um, that is present with us today. I want you to take a moment to look at your program, preachers. Notice that I am the last one. I say that because, and you might say, well, why is he the last one? Because I was the first one that she called, besides her own biological, that she called son. How do you know, preacher? Because before she became the Reverend Williams or Dr. Williams, she was Deaconess Williams. She and her late husband served as my deacon and deaconess at the New Hope Primitive Baptist Church on the west side of Stilton. When I was just a boy preacher, trying to learn what church was like, that's my gadget going off, but I'm good. Uh, she I went to church and I just started preaching, just gotten into church, even though I grew up in church, I got away. Went to church one day and uh, we were preparing at the time to go down to Alexandria or White Post, Virginia, to the Second National Contocton Primitive Baptist Association, which we were at that time a part of. and. Uh, I didn't have church clothes. I had a, a coat of many colors, <laughs> which was plaid. I had a pair of pinstripe pants. David, Carolyn, and Marie, and they, 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 they used to laugh at me because I didn't know anything about dressing. But she made her husband, Deacon Dennis, and Deacon James Cobb take me to, to Anderson Little on 19th Street. And uh, they bought me some clothes, a jacket, some pants, shoes, that when I went down to the association that I would be properly dressed. And it was from that time on that I been blessed to be able to dress. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And she always says, son, that's what she called me. She didn't call me preacher, reverend, or minister. She called me son. It's because of her and other mothers in the church that I am where I am today. I talked to her the day prior to her surgery. I called, as we often 
did, and she would call me, and I offered a word of prayer for her. When my son died back here in June, I just come out of open heart surgery. And uh, I questioned why not me? Why him? I've lived my life. He was just 41. And she said to me, she said, son, God still has a purpose for you. I didn't understand at the time because I was hurting. But I do now know what that purpose is. I bless God for her and I thank God for the words uh, that has been spoken, the scriptures that have been given. But I thank God for the woman that I knew as deaconess, Willa Mae Williams. She used to call me and I'm going to my seat. She would call me, Sister Pam would tell you, and she would say, uh, son, I have your best meal. And I said, you mean you got some chicken and dumplings? <laughs> she said, I'll expect you to come by. And I would go by and I eat my chicken and dumplings. And so I thank God for her, Pam. I thank God for you. And I thank God for the family, Miss Doris. Miss Doris, Miss Willamay watched out for my son that passed. She was his neighbor. And he used to say, Dad, I don't like her because she know my business. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, always, she was always in my business. So thank God somebody got in your business. Because it was somebody that got in my business that brought me to my relationship with God. Miss Doris more or less raised my, she's 14 now, my granddaughter, which was my son's daughter. So that connection still remains. So I'm not just here as Reverend Wilford. I'm here as family. We love you and we're praying for you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for that word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, words of encouragement from these pastors. Uh, now we're going to uh, give the special selection from the one and only uh, David White, and then we're going to be ready to go. Everybody, Bishop, I thought you was going to dismiss. <laughs> my, my, my background singers had to go home. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, you've been so good to Sister Willa May Williams. I was just sitting here, reading obituary. You've been so good to her. I imagine when she was down to her last time. You made a way just in time. Can you turn my mic down a little bit? You brought her from a mighty long way. Oh, you've been her mother. You've been her father. You've been her sister. Lord, you never left her, stood right by her side, and when trouble came, you wiped the tears from her eyes. That should have been me, sleeping, sleeping in my grave. Lord, you made all that, that we If you know a song, say what that would be. Oh, you brought me, you brought me from my heart. You brought me, you brought me from my You brought me, yeah. Everybody say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Amen. We serve a good and powerful God. Somebody give the God a hand clap of praise for a life well lived. Amen. My purpose was to give a eulogy. Amen. And I would be remiss to not to say that here at the Good Memorial Baptist Church, we will miss Dr. Williams. If you do not know, we have a library across in our life center in which she donated her library to the church when she moved to Florida. Amen. Come on, you can clap for that. Amen. So that as individuals are studying and preparing themselves, they have a place of resources if they don't have their own. As we were going through her books, when we were cleaning out her house, I was like, that one goes to the church, that one comes with me, that one goes to the church, these come with me. <laughs> Amen. And so even when I teach now in Bible study, the Bible I am using is full with her notes in the corner, her highlights, because she was a student of God. Amen. Come on, somebody give her a hand clap of praise. If at this time, if we could prepare for recessional, amen? I like the pallbearers in the back or the front. If you are designated as a pallbearer, please come to the front of the church, amen, to help with the flowers. The pallbearers, please come to the front of the church to help with the flowers. If the clergy, amen, could come and line up two by two so that we can process before the casket, for those who are able to walk, amen. After the clergy, if there are, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Clergy two by two. Amen. Not yet, not yet, Pastor, Pastor Chambers. Amen. Not yet, not yet. Amen. If there are any, amen. Representative of uh, Deacon, Deaconesses, amen, you are free to come now and join the processional. Amen. Two by two, pastors, please. Amen. Oh, you, you can go. Yeah, the flowers can go. Flowers can go. Flowers can go. Amen. Amen. Paul Burroughs are at the back. Amen. Amen. Clergy, would you proceed? Amen. In my house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto me. That where I am, there you may be also. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you again. Who may abide in the day of his coming and who shall stand in his appearance? <laughs> 